the Can-Am Challenge at Laguna Seca. It's a race, a test of courage, a happening, a see and be seen weekend in the California sun. People are what the Can-Am Challenge is all about. Racing people, all kinds and sizes and shapes of people, gathered here in the Northern California hillside to see the stars for sure, but also to share in the fun themselves to perhaps live out a Walter Mitty race car fantasy, to show their heels to the field and take an imaginary checkered flag en route to a fantasy championship. But these crowds have also come for the real thing. The point standings highlight this deciding round of the Can-Am Challenge. A season-long battle for supremacy finds three men, Unzer, Holbert, and Sullivan, all with a shot at the title. Al Unser Jr., freckle-faced son of a three-time Indy 500 winner. Al Holbert, the respected veteran who missed the season opener but has battled back. And Danny Sullivan, the young charger who knows full well what he's got to do today. The championship? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd have to win, and the two Al's have to finish below. I think Al Holbert has to finish below fourth and junior below fifth, or they have to finish fourth and fifth. I think that would give it to me. Or if you won and they both broke, yeah, that would do or it. Or if I won and I shoved both of them off, <laughs> you know, that would do it as well. But uh, but I would still need uh, the points. Actually, 60 points would 60 points would. I still need the point. I still have to win to win the championship. I see. And with uh, Jeff Brabham up there going quick at the moment, that's going to be another one I have to push off. <laughs> As the mechanics tend to the hundreds of technological details of a successful Can-Am team, let's see how the contenders qualified for this showdown. On the pole with a new track record, Can-Am rookie Al Unser Jr., winner of the first two races. Jeff Brabham, son of the legendary Jack Brabham, second fastest in only his second series outing since winning the championship last year. Third spot to Sullivan in his Paul Newman-owned Budweiser-sponsored March, winner of the series round of Las Vegas, Nevada. And starting fourth, Al Holbert, whose clutch victory at Riverside, California a week ago kept alive his title hopes. This automotive engineer from Warrington, Pennsylvania offers his analysis of the Laguna Seca track. It's very fast. The average speed is around eight, nine miles an hour slower than Riverside. It's it's constant high speed, except there's one problem with this racetrack, and that is very difficult to pass on. It's the most difficult racetrack we run on to pass on uh, because there is no straightaway. There's absolutely no straightaway anywhere, and it's all... Even the fastest parts of the race course have squiggles in them, and uh, if a guy doesn't want to let you by, you're not going to get by. And just up pit road, young Unzer talks shop with Dan Gurney, whose Indy car he'll drive next season. Al Unzer, is there any single key to beating Al Holbert? Oh, the only way really is to uh, be able to out outwork him and, and uh, you know, have my car running better than he is. Al's really uh, a professional driver, and he's a hard driver, and, uh, you know, it all comes down to, to how well the car is working. And, of course, it has all come down to this one race shootout for the championship. All year, the contenders have battled for the right to simply be here today, to roll the dice against the best in the business and see whose number comes up. In the midst of overwhelming pressure, they gird themselves for battle. Among the crowd favorites today, Jim Crawford, whose small engine car converted from Formula One has seen instant success this season. The challenger, Holbert, is ready. Sullivan, the charger, also prepared. The leader, Unzer, sits on the pole. The pace car in position, and we're moments away from the final round of the Can-Am Challenge. The Raceway, Monterey, California, scene of the final round of the 1982 Can-Am Challenge. The pace car pulls away. The field prepares to move off on a scheduled 66-lap, 125-mile battle to decide the championship. This nine-turn course will be a stern test for the field, which lines up like this for the series finale. Remember that point leader Unzer, Holbert, and Sullivan are the contenders. Sullivan must win the race to win the title, while Holbert must outpoint Unzer today if he is to take the crown. Meanwhile, 
Al Bertel Roos has already clinched the championship in Can-Am's under two liter division. And he says that for the courageous, Laguna Seca is a flat out test of skill. Oh yeah, it's very fast. And uh, you know, corner one and two, it's flat out corners if you're tough and if you have a good core, but it, it's really difficult to go flat out. So there you have to fight yourself all the time in order to keep the gas pedal to the floor. And then we have the corkscrew, which is an exceptional difficult corner, unusual corner. It pulls off right down, you know, and uh, it's a very fast circuit. How's this track for passing, Bertel? Uh, I think it's the most difficult track all season to pass on. It's just about impossible. The guy in front must do a really serious mistake if you should have a chance to pass. With Unzer and Brabham in the front row, Sullivan and Holbert close behind. The field funnels through turn nine, awaiting that flicker of green, and the Can-Am challenge is on! The closest thing to a straightaway at Laguna is this rush to turn one. Al Unzer Jr. has grabbed the lead from Brabham, Holbert, and Sullivan. Quartet with the field in tow, stream through turn two and begin the ascent toward that perilous corkscrew bend that wakes at the top of the hill. Teammates for today, Unser and Brabham lead the assault on turn six and six A. But Holbert is in trouble in the corkscrew. Contact perhaps with Danny Sullivan sets Holbert spinning on the first lap. Another car tangles with Holbert's stricken machine. Al trying desperately to get back into the battle. He knows that he cannot spot Unzer any kind of lead today. But for Holbert and those who fail to get around his stricken BDS racing number one, this could be a very, very long afternoon. At last, Holbert able to extricate himself from that tangle of misfortune. His championship hopes have been dealt a serious blow here at Laguna's famous corkscrew. But what a break for Al Unzer Jr., the 20-year-old wunderkind of Can-Am, who hurtles on down the hill into the tight left-hand turn nine, last turn on the track. Unzer leads his teammate Jeff Brabham, and he now provides a helpful buffer between Unzer and his challengers as the Rick Gallo's own cars hurtle on. From the back of the pack, a bruised but not yet beaten Al Hobart on track in his pursuit of the championship. Eddie Wax is on pit road. His car lost its rear wing in that corkscrew shunt with Holbert. And here is third place Danny Sullivan, the Louisville, Kentucky campaigner whose problems inside the race car include a minor difficulty with his neck. That's well, broken. But that isn't too bad as long as your no. head doesn't fall off. He says it's not much chance of it falling off. It's just a, a break. But my spine is a little bit out, as I, as I gather are most people's. But because of the hammering that you take in the race car and the, and the um, you know, these stiff ground effects cars and all the loads. And we're getting through turns uh, two and three down here at 165 miles an hour. I'm probably pulling a lead. It just finally said I've had enough, and it got a little stiff and tingling in my arm. So. Well, such problems might well douse the enthusiasm of a mere mortal, but not of a Can-Am stalwart like Danny Sullivan or Al Unser Jr., a little Al who uses every inch of racetrack to keep his challengers at bay. On the main straightaway, Al Holbert in the red number one presses on. Meanwhile, the Eddie Wax crew is about to replace that wing lost in Holbert's corkscrew tangle. Mike Allen's number 59 also showing severe body damage from that incident. He skitters around the racetrack. And for the moment, Laguna Seca belongs to a 20-year-old youngster following in the footsteps of a famous father. Al Unser Jr. leads this final round of the Can-Am Challenge. Victory today would give this awesomely talented kid a stunning Can-Am Championship in his rookie season. Second spot belongs to Jeff Brabham. Third is Danny Sullivan as the action continues at Laguna Seca. Fans cheering on their favorites provide the excitement. The backdrop is one of the most beautiful in all of motorsports. Laguna Seca Raceway on California's Monterey Coast. 
but the Can-Am Challenge story is Al Unzer Jr. as he carves his way through the back markers, seeking his fourth win of the year of the series championship that goes with it. Now there's trouble at the exit of the corkscrew. That's Myrtle Root smoking, apparently done for the day. The David versus Goliath champion of the under two liter division has blown up an engine. Of course, the prospect of mechanical failure also weighs most heavily on the mind of young Unzer. He crashed hard in morning practice. His crew frantically rebuilt his machine for this afternoon's race. Were all the gremlins found? Did all the bolts get tightened in that rush? And as Al Unzer Jr. leads Jeff Graberman's Danny Sullivan, do such thoughts prey on his young mind? And what of Jim Crawford, whose mid-season arrival on the Can-Am scene has been a breath of fresh air? Crawford's car is known as a Formula One conversion, the type of machine in which Jim runs for the British Formula One championship. In three Can-Am series starts, Crawford has earned three top five finishes. That success has sparked great interest in this type of machine as a Can-Am weapon of the future. In fact, series officials will change next year's rules governing three-liter cars like this in order to encourage their participation in the series. Also coming back next year, Bertel Roos, the fiery king of the under two-liter division, who hopes to defend that crown in a better race car. And a uh, little more modern from the two for You know, my, my car I've driven this year is the 78 model. And uh, there is better cars around, and I shall try to get a little better car for next year because the competition is for sure going to be much steeper. Back on the track, there's trouble in turn two. That's Mike Freeberg's Lola going into the retaining wall. The strain of a long race and a long season now beginning to take a toll. Freeberg limps away from the scene of that misfortune. The left rear tire on his machine is flat. With a host of challengers bearing down on him, that's going to complicate his problem of getting safely back to the pits. Those pits, meanwhile, are where the action is. The grimly determined Al Holbert, a lap down to race leader Unser, brings in the BDS-1, needing very quick service, and indeed, Holbert gets just that. A marvelous stop. Al back out quickly. His fate title hopes are still alive. Now, Danny Sullivan is in, the third-place car, also on pit road. And here comes the leader, Al Unzer Jr., in for service. This will be the key pit stop. Little Al needs very much to get in and out quickly and without incident. Slick and very professional, the Gallus Racing crew works its magic. Unzer is away, but Danny Sullivan has climbed out of his race car. Danny, what's the problem? Well, the first problem I had was back uh, passing a back marker, a under two-liter car, and got alongside of me and just turned into me. And I drug him about halfway down the straight and bent a steering arm. But we were still looking okay. Um, came in and made our pit stop and changed the turn. Got back out and we're running third. And um, coming out of the corkscrew, the suspension collapsed. Oh, really? Left front suspension. So that was that. Was that. It, looked like, it looked like Al Holbert had trouble too on it. Well, that was me. I, I thought I could pass him in a spot. And I went for it. And I didn't have quite enough, and he turned in, I tapped him and spun him around. So the flamboyant Sullivan's pre-race words about pushing his rivals off the track proved prophetic. Meanwhile, Sullivan's own downfall has removed another obstacle from the championship path of Al Unzer Jr., a remarkably mature 20-year-old who certainly seems to understand what winning championships is all about. It takes money, of course. I think it takes a real good crew and a, and a real good driver. You know, it, you have to work as a team. I know on, on our team, uh, no one man is, is bigger than the team. You know, the, the car owner really, Rick, really preaches that. And, uh, you know, we, it's, we're like a football team. In order for, for the car to really go fast on the racetrack, uh, everybody has to do their job the, the best they can. I'm just a small part of what, what really goes on. I guess I'm just the, the final touches uh, in the whole process. But all is not rosy for the Roman Wheels camp. Unzer's teammate, Jeff Gravel, has a problem. 
He's blown the right front tire. A new wheel set to go into place, but removing the old rubber only reveals the extent of damage to the car's suspension. Brabham begins to unbuckle. He'll climb out of the car and become the day's second front runner to retire. Without his teammate, Unzer now stands alone in his championship quest. He must stand off Al Holbert, who has charged into second place with Brabham's retirement. The Can-Am Challenge will go to the wire. Number 73, emerging star Jim Crawford, well on his way to a fourth consecutive top five finish. Throughout this nine-race campaign, the two Owls have battled. Holbert has won four races, Unzer three. But Holbert missed the series opening round, forcing him to play catch-up. Now, with the clock running out, the laps winding down, Holbert's pursuit of Unzer takes on a desperate air. A pass alone is not enough. Holbert needs an Unzer misfortune if he's going to pull out the title. But for his part, little Al looks strong, confident, the look perhaps of a Can-Am champion in the making. Third place Crawford holds that spot, will lock up a fifth place series ranking. Impressive for a man who drove just half the season. Al Unzer Jr., six laps away from the championship, but there's trouble. John Graham has crashed. Holbert clips the wreck with his rear wing. That will be the fatal blow to Holbert's title hopes. Unzer screams into the corkscrew. Holbert limps along behind the wing, dangling. The all-important aerodynamics of his car destroyed. In the wink of an eye, a great battle between two great competitors has abruptly ended. The cars are flagged off the track due to the Graham accident. John, by the way, is okay. Al Holbert's twice-wounded racer limps to the pits. Al Unzer Jr. wins the Can-Am Championship. The checkers fall on a silent field. The race completed after 60 of 66 laps. Holbert and crew performed marvelously, but came up short. Al Unzer Jr.'s uncharacteristic walk to victory lane must certainly prompt thoughts of a family dynasty. Surely little Al is following in the footsteps of his father, three times winner of the famed Indy 500. Well, I really don't know. If, if I could uh, try to follow my dad's footsteps, I think that would be the the greatest thing in my life, you know, uh, if I can just do half of what he's done, I'll be, I'll be real satisfied. Unzer also had high praise for his crew, whose Johnny on the spot rebuilding of his race car after that morning warm-up crash was one key to the championship. Yeah, they really did. I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't express enough of, of how hard they worked and, and how good of a job they did. Uh, the car went back to the, the same it was and, uh, you know, it just felt super out there. I was able to run wide open in two and three and, and just, uh, you know, it was back to the same it was. They just did a super job. They're, they're really super good, I tell you. And so it's hugs all around for the Unzer family and the Rick Gallas crew, but the moment belongs to Little Al. How long can that nickname stick to one so talented as this? As an 85-pound teenager, Al Jr. manhandled a sprint car to win after win in his native New Mexico. As a precocious road racer, he won last year's Super V Championship on his first try. Now he has reached the pinnacle of North American road racing. Al Unzer Jr., king of the Can-Am Challenge. And so peace returns to the Monterey Peninsula. The engines fall silent. The season is over. And in this moment of quiet beauty and serenity, the drivers pause. It's live from the 24 hours of Daytona. The motorcycle 